Now as you see here, we do a side by side size comparison to let you see not only how Devastator has evolved, but how Devastator's size has evolved as well. Now with the repaint of Six Builder, aka Constructicon Devastator from Transformers Universe, we can see he's a small guy in the bunch. No surprise of course because he's made up of, for all intents and purposes, mini cons. We look at the original Devastator in his glory and we see he's dwarfed by the Energon repaint of Constructicon Devastator and of course he is dwarfed by the Revenge of the Fallen Devastator. Now the Revenge of the Fallen Devastator as you can see he's awesome in his size and he is massive in his width. In this particular display I have him posed out in what I call my Tazbot pose because he reminds me of the Tasmanian Devil with the short legs, the hulking arms and the big jaws. But just look at how awesome the size of this Devastator is. The drawback to this Revenge of the Fallen Devastator as opposed to the other incarnations is when you separate him into his individual components, they don't transform into individual robot modes. I know, I know. Disappointing. I was hurt too. I eagerly anticipated seeing this figure displayed out. And of course, originally when they start releasing the Revenge of the Fallen figures and you had some of the individual Constructicons come out, of course, like most people, I thought, well, they're going to be able to transform, they're going to be able to combine, and based on most of them either being Deluxe and or Voyager class figures, this Devastator should be huge. Well, they didn't disappoint me on the huge part, that's for sure. However, again, with the individual components not being able to transform, it kind of takes a little of the luster away from this Devastator, but on Hasbro's defense, I understand that if they did have the individual components transform this thing would be sloppy to keep together and it would be extremely heavy because as he stands here now he's no lightweight I would say he weighs anywhere between five and eight pounds so he's pretty thick now I told y'all my boy was bad as you see him here how he stacks up against the other devastator incarnations well, let's just say they don't quite compare. As you can see, the classics reissue of Constructicon Devastator, he can't stand for it. The G1 Devastator incarnation, he's all broken up about this. And as you look at my boy Six Builder, the repaint of Universe Constructicon Devastator, well, let's just say he's got my man Constructicon Devastator from Revenge of the Fallen all choked up as he's made a light snack out of him. You wondered originally why I had him in the Tazbot pose? Now you see why. For the display of this, uh, for the purpose of this display right here, it shows the legacy of Devastator. And it shows that maybe this not, might not be the best incarnation of Devastator. But you got to admit, people, he is the biggest and baddest. Now, the drawbacks, again, about this Devastator, my biggest disappointment is the fact that the individual components do not transform into robot mode. However, it's to my understanding that there's going to be a Legends version of this Devastator that is going to be introduced. And not only do they transform into their individual vehicle components, but they also combine as well as turn into their individual robot modes. I am eagerly, eagerly anticipating getting this figure and adding it to my Devastator's Legacy collection, as I'm sure you will be too. Now, as far as recommendations, if you are a fan like I am, you gots to pick this up. He's big, he's bulky, he's heavy, and he takes up space, but he displays oh so nice. Don't you agree? Well, as for me, this has been Jay Jero. This has been another Anderson 1939 production, and I ain't got to go home, but I'm getting the H-E-Double hockey sticks out of here. Peace out, people!